Hello, we're going to pick up now with episode 3 of the Sermon on the Mount and pick up where we left off. So we left off in Matthew approximately 7.20 and Jesus said, Wherefore by their fruits ye shall know them. So he was mentioning that there are two types of trees and to beware false prophets. And there are some interesting scriptures also that are parallel to this passage, and it is taken from Luke ch chapter 6, verse 43, um, down to about, well, we'll go to 46. For a good tree, I'm over here now, for a good tree bringeth not forth corrupt fruit, neither doth a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. For every tree is known by its own fruit. For of thorns men do not gather figs, nor of a bran bramble bush gather they grapes. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart, this is in, in addition to what was in Matthew, this Luke 6.45, the highlighted yellow, where Jesus says, A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good, and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. So we know that the tree is can be corrupt. And the tree representing the man, the unregenerate man in the flesh who has not been born again, uh, is a corrupt tree. And the whole tree has to be taken down. There's no reviving that tree. There's no saving that tree. Uh, a bramble bush will always be a bramble bush. A uh, fig tree will always be a fig tree. So the Lord wants us to become a new tree when we're born again into his kingdom. And then we'll produce the right type of fruit. So when we are non-regenerate, an evil man, he says, out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil, just like the corrupt tree bringeth forth corruption or evil fruit. So it comes from the heart. It comes from within the man. And we know that when John the Baptist came, he recommended that men and women, here in Luke 3, verses 8, bring forth therefore fruits worthy of repentance. And begin not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father, for I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And look at this, Luke 3, verses 9. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, which bringeth forth not forth good fruit, is hewn down, I'm over here, and cast into the fire. So here John the Baptist came, and he warned men to repent of their lifestyles of the sins that they were engaged in he was preparing the way of the Lord he was the prophet for the Lord Jesus Christ and 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 he basically says back up here in Luke 3 4 that he was the voice of one crying in the wilderness to prepare ye the way of the Lord make it make his paths straight every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be brought low and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough ways shall be made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. He was warning the people, get ready, change your life, repent of your sins, make the tree good, and you will produce good fruit. So as we continue on now, Look at what Jesus begins to say. I'm going to jump back over here now to Matthew 7.21 over in this area. And look what Jesus begins to say. What a stern warning. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Well, wait. Lord, I thought that all you had to do was say a short prayer and ask Jesus into my heart. Well, that's not what the Lord is saying here. He's saying that there's coming a day, in verse 22, here we'll go on, and it says, Many will say to me in that day, 
Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And look what Jesus responds to them in verse 23. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So, so this is a very sobering thought that there are going to be many who come to the Lord in that day and they're going to call him Lord. And we see in verse 21 and in verse 22, they say it twice. They say, Lord, Lord, with a sense of urgency. And look at some of the commendations these, these men, possibly women, have on that day they're saying have we not prophesied in your name and have we and in thy name have cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works possibly healing the sick um, raising the dead so these men and the Lord didn't rebuke them and say no you're a bunch of liars you didn't do these things he didn't he didn't say that at all he just, he says the main issue here He's, I'm warning them, I'm going to profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So the Lord is saying the bottom line is, is the attitude towards sin in our heart. Are we a corrupt tree? Uh, are we, have we uh, laid the axe to the root of the tree as John the Baptist warned in Luke chapter 3? To chop down that old man that the old man would be crucified with Christ and that we would rise again in newness of life. Have we done that? And now that the tree is a good tree, then it's going to ultimately produce good fruit as long as the it stays in the proper soil, as long as it gets the proper nutrients. That tree, if it's well tended, is going to grow up and is going to bear fruit. And notice that they are professing that they know the Lord. But what does the Lord say to them in, in 7.23? He says, it's not a matter of us knowing the Lord. It's the Lord saying, I never knew you. So, sobering thoughts when we get into the Word of God and we actually see what Jesus taught. And I would venture to say there's many pastors out there today who aren't teaching what Jesus taught. They wouldn't even let possibly Jesus into their pulpit. These words would be too harsh for them. But here we're getting clear warning from the Lord Jesus Christ. Just to enhance this thought in Matthew 7, uh, 23, we can also jump over to Luke chapter 13 and there was a question posed to the Lord I'm over here now Luke 13 24 where Jesus is asked a question in in verse 23 of Luke 13 where a disciple says Lord are there few that be saved and what does the Lord say to them in verse 24 he says strive to enter in at the straight gate for many I say unto you will seek to enter in and shall not be able when once the master of the house is risen up and hath shut to the door and you begin to stand without and to knock at the door saying Lord Lord here's this Lord Lord again open unto us and he shall answer and say unto you I know you I know you not whence ye are then ye shall begin to say we have eaten and drunk in thy presence and thou hast taught in our streets in verse 27 this highlighted yellow but he shall say I tell you I know you not, whence ye are, depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. And verse 28, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth when ye shall see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and you yourselves thrust out. And they shall come from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south and shall sit down in the kingdom of God and behold, there are, la there are last which shall be first and there are first which shall be last. This is an indication that the Gentiles will be coming in, and that's uh, I'm a Gentile, 
and if you're not born of the seed of Abraham of the flesh uh, then you are a Gentile as well so the Lord is opening up the kingdom opening up the way to all men and again the issue here is uh, the Lord says he knows not once you once you are from where you are from depart from me all you workers of iniquity again men and women who have played the fool with sin and weren't let into the kingdom of God. In fact, they were thrust out where there was weeping and gnashing of teeth. So, sobering words. And now I want to get into uh, a little bit onto the the two types of foundations we can build our, our the house upon. And there's a good picture here I want to show. I want to show uh, this picture of one house that's built on top of the rock. It's actually uh, Im looks like it's embedded in this rock, and you can see that even the this this narrow connection here to the earth is enough to hold up this whole structure. I thought that was pretty fascinating, and you can see it's surrounded by uh, all this water, perhaps a, a large ocean. I'm not sure where this place is. Um, and we can go on to the next house. I'll just show you the second type of house. This one was built near the beach, near the water, not in the water like the other one, um, but they, they built it uh, on a poor foundation. So you can see this house built near the sand, possibly on the sand, a poor foundation, and the whole house, the whole structure is, is about to fall down. So with these pictures in mind, let's read the the words of Jesus here, beginning in um, Matthew 7.24. He says, After all that we've just discussed, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And verse 26, And every one that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. So here we have two houses. The difference is one was built on the rock, and the other one was built on the sand. And the same calamity came against both of them. Rain descending, floods coming, winds blowing, both uh, these elements, the, all these elements beating upon the house, one fell and the other one did not. The difference was it was founded upon, one was founded on the rock, the other was on the sand. And what does Jesus say the rock and the sand are? You know, you'll hear songs, uh, on Christ the solid rock I stand, or Jesus is my rock, I built my life on the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, those are good, but they're not quite accurate I think what's most important here and Jesus says it is the rock is therefore whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them this is the man who is the wise man again it's a there's an issue of obedience here there's hearing not just going to church and hearing the sermon there's many who do that but there are those who hear and then obey it, obey the commandments of Jesus. And we're going to go through the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount and we're going to see some of the commandments of the Lord Jesus and why it's important to take these things seriously. Because it's an issue of life and death. One man hears the sayings and does them and the storms come and his life is successful. He makes it through the calamities of life because he's founded upon that rock of trusting in the Lord and having an intimate relationship with the Lord where the Lord will say in the end day I know you he will profess that I believe he'll profess that and so uh, he, the other man comes and hears the same teachings he's maybe sitting next to you in the pew but he doesn't do them. and the Lord says I'm gonna liken him to a foolish man he's building his life on sand now the Lord obviously wants us to build on the rock. We see uh, some parallel thoughts on this. I'll just jump over to the account in Luke real quick here just so that we don't miss anything. 
The man says, the man who built his house on the rock, it says in Luke 6.48, he dug deep and laid the foundation on a rock. So you have to dig down deep before you actually start building the superstructure. And the man on the sand didn't spend the time to dig down deep and build the proper foundation before he built his superstructure. So you get this mental image of the two houses and how important the foundation is. The foundation is being born again. The foundation is coming into the kingdom of God and repenting. But then how we build our life, do we come to the Lord, hear his teachings, read the Bible, hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, and obey? And that will be building your life on the rock and not on the sand when we do that. Uh, he says, uh, again in, in verse 49, But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built a house upon the earth, and against which the stream did beat vehemently, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of the house was great. So it's pretty parallel, I think, through Luke chapter 6. Uh, so let's jump to John chapter 14. On this issue of keeping his commandments, what does Jesus say in John 14, 15 in the Olivet Discourse to his disciples before he's about to go to the cross? He, he begins to say, if you love me, keep my commandments to his, his closest disciples. So love and obedience are tied together. If you are not obeying the Lord, you're not loving the Lord. So it's not a matter of legalism. It's a matter of, Lord, be for what you've done for me, I want to obey you. I want to know you more and more. And obedience and love are tied together. Again, in John 14, 21, the Lord in the same discourse says, He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Is there anything greater than this, my friend, in the Christian walk? Is there anything greater, I challenge you with this, that he that hath my commandments and keepeth them. That's the issue. I have it highlighted over here in yellow. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father. Do you want to be loved of the Father and loved of the Lord? And have them manifest themselves to us. Well, I hope that answer is yes. It most certainly is in my life. Friends, let's endeavor to build our lives on the rock and again that is hearing his sayings and obeying them because it's an issue of love we want to pour out our love to the Lord we want our lives to be useful to the Lord and pleasing to the Lord well friends I think that covers uh, the end of the Sermon on the Mount, and it's not the end of this series by any means. This is episode three, and I'm going to now, in the next uh, episode, I want to begin and go back to Matthew chapter five, where Jesus begins the Sermon on the Mount. So with, with the end in mind, let's see what Jesus taught. And let's see, we're going to see how high that standard is, but I think in the end we're going to see that the Lord doesn't leave us to ourselves. He wants to give us the grace through his Holy Spirit to be able to follow him in all points and draw close to him. God bless you. We'll see you next time.